Welcome to this time of worship. It is a special Sunday in the church year on this first Sunday of November uh, when we celebrate All Saints Day. So we have a list of names that people have called or let us know that Margaret will read out in a little, little bit. There will also be a time for people to call out a name of someone who has passed away in the last year that we can lift them up and remember them and the joy that br they brought us. It's a Sunday uh, can be also um, uh, bittersweet. You know, we, we celebrate our life together as a place of worship and a spiritual home, and we also celebrate and recognize that there were many saints that went before us to make it possible for us all to be here today. So on this Sunday, November 5th, which is also Sunday School, um, we will begin our worship service with the prelude for all the saints. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Today is All Saints Day, established as an opportunity to honor all those known and unknown who aspired to know God face to face. While we may give thanks for the lives of particular saints of ages past, the emphasis is on the ongoing blessing of the whole people of God. Please join me in today's opening prayer. Almighty God, you have knit together your beloved in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us to follow your holy saints in virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise as you are able for opening hymn for all the saints, verses 1, 4, and 6 of hymn number 711. Oh 
I invite you to join me in the prayer for illumination today. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. One day, as the crowd, one day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. You may be seated for the epistle lesson taken from John, 1, John 3, 1 through 3. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us to be his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that when we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. Mm. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I think we're ready for Sunday school. Yay! Hi, Emma. Where's... Everybody's here. Where? Oh, there's Robbie. Hi, Henry. You want to go on up? Kevin, can we have a little traveling music? How about it, folks? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. We've deviated a little bit from our um, travel through the book of Matthew, and we've gone back to the Beatitudes, the, um, the blessed are statements of Jesus, one of Jesus' first teachings from the Sermon on the Mount. For it's specific for uh, All Saints' Day. And so in that context of how we uh, recognize the saints' uh, who have passed and the saints among us, let's look at those blessed are statements. And I believe that there is probably not a more beautiful or poignant description of God's compassionate love and blessings than what Jesus teaches from that hillside in the Sermon on the Mount. 
And Matthew uh, portrays and places this uh, sermon early on in Jesus' ministry. It's only chapter 5. And he's offering a kind of, it's a professor kind of thing, he's offering a kind of synopsis, a course description of what his ministry is going to be like going forward and what he needed to teach the children of God. And he begins with the Beatitudes, or as I like to call it, how to be the attitude of Christ. And every lesson begins with God blesses. It's a great reminder that God blesses the poor, the humble, the peacemakers, those who are merciful. Our God is a compassionate, loving God and calls us through Jesus to be the same. Our lives are meant to be lived in the attitude of Christ. And our opening prayer kind of set us up for this way of being. Grant us grace, we prayed to follow your holy saints in virtuous and godly living, that we may come to know those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely worship you. I'm nervous now. My mic keeps dropping out. But they're new batteries, so I'm thinking it's that. All right. So I'm thinking that we can't be one of those uh, virtuous uh, saints without tending to that godly living enlisted in the ways of the Beatitudes. But there's something that I noticed as I was reading through the Beatitudes this last week. Not one of those people that God blesses would deliberately choose to be that way. Who would choose to be hungry? Who would choose to mourn? Who would choose to be poor? Jesus says God does bless not only those who have no choice, but also those who deliberately choose humility. Humility over pride, integrity over greed, mercy over injustice. Now sometimes choice is personal. We have the power to choose. And sometimes choice is taken away from you. How do we deal with the hand we're dealt depends a lot on how well we listen in class. Jesus is teaching his disciples, those who abide by the ways of a merciful and compassionate God, become virtuous and guided in godly living in such a way that God blesses it. And by God's Spirit, we are drawn into this way of living. Not because we are the perfect people to do it. Because we are the hungry people capable of loving a perfect God. And the Beatitudes both comfort and challenge us. And Jesus tells us that by God's blessing, we are made capable of living into those who seek to be the attitude of Christ. I think we can agree that um, to acknowledge uh, the Beatitudes in the way that they were meant to be um, outlines a pretty tough job description. And I doubt if any one of us live into them perfectly. And I've known many saints 
and I'm confident that they struggled too. So let's look at verse 9 a minute. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. I think we can agree our world is in need of peace. Our neighborhood is in need of peace. Our homes are in need of peace. And so how do we work for that? I guess the first and most obvious way is to embody it. We do what we can to work against war. We advocate for peace with justice. We rise above the temptation to get even or justify violence. And we choose to live like the hymn says. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Being the peacemaker begins deep down inside all of us, inside our hearts and minds and souls. Building peace, feeding the hungry, acting mercifully, and being humble are part of incorporating and embodying that sense of peacemaking. And then on this All Saints Day, we look at perhaps the most comforting of the Beatitudes in verse 4. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. As I mentioned at the beginning of service in a minute, Margaret is going to be calling out the names of people, friends and family members, loved ones who have died within the last year. And this morning, uh, before we opened the door for a food giveaway, I went out and asked for names from our friends that come for food. of working through the love lost, the friendship ended, the respect reserved for a special person, and grieving never really ends. It simply becomes part of who we are, how we live. And maybe that's why God blesses those who mourn because the comforting presence of God is lifelong, especially in the loneliness of deep sadness. Not too long before Jesus was killed, he made his followers a promise. I will rise again, he said. Now, followers of every age have taken this promise seriously, whether in a physical form or through acts of compassion and mercy and love that we do in Jesus' name. We believe Jesus will rise again. At part of my committal service at a graveside, I will pray a prayer of thanks and comfort that the departed now knows face to face what we only know by faith. There is comfort in knowing that a loved one or a dear friend or even a friend of a friend that the departed soul is now forever linked in eternity. We have faith Jesus will rise that Jesus lives, and we behold the attitude of Christ. The disciple John knew how to behold the attitude of Christ, and he also knew the powerful way that grief could dominate one's life. And his first letter believers was to comfort those who mourned. 
especially the absence of their friend and teacher, Jesus. In his letter, John fed the believers some spiritual food. He reassured the followers of every age that we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. That's the promise that sustains us and helps us in our grieving. It's the promise that comforts us, gives us hope in the midst of adversity, sustains us in our weakness, and encourages us in our work for peace. John, if it's the same John, was the beloved disciple. He knew the heart of God because he knew the heart of Jesus. And how heartbreaking his grief must have been How hopeful he must have been for peace. And how encouraged he was to convey this to future believers. There will be saints for generation after generations who will work to be the attitude of Christ. And from then to now and beyond, we seek God's blessing on our lives and the work that we do together with the saints, now and forevermore. And for those who are grieving, even though distance may divide, Christ's promise unites us, those bound by time, those blessed by eternity. That is when we give thanks for this comforting truth as we journey together striving to be the attitude of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As we enter into our time of prayer, we begin with our All Saints Remembrance, naming the saints who have died this past year. There will be a time for you to add any at the end of our received list. And so may the bell call us to an inner silent remembrance. Richard Blumerick, Cheryl Clark, Betty Need Conrad, Carol Cowan, Joyce Crescent, Bishop Sudhana Devadar, Jim Doran, Louise Goding, Reverend Paul Gongloff, Bishop William Boyd Grove, Bonnie Guthrie, Linda Herd Holland, Michelle Jones, Shirley Crying, Yvonne Krieger. Dr. Michael Lewis, Bernice McGovern, Gary Miller, Cecile Otemi, John Schaefer, Luella Mae Carson Shank, Terry Sleeman, Helen Valenza, and for all babies and children who die unexpectedly. And from our friends at Table of Abundance, Chino and Edward. Please call out any names not already spoken. Hear now these words of blessing adapted from John O'Donoghue. Though we need to weep their loss, they dwell in that safe place in our hearts where no storm or pain can reach them. We look toward them no longer, but their spirit is alive, awake and complete. Now they dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close as we are to ourselves. Let us not look for them only in memory, but find them in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows, when music echoes eternal tones. May they continue to inspire us to enter each day with a generous heart, an attitude of Jesus. Inspire us to heed the call to courage and the call to practice love until all tears are wiped from our minds and death will be no more. Let the bell now call us into a silent gratitude for these lives. For today's prayer requests, we have some additions, but first an update. Um, we heard from Christina that um, Alan's successful, her surgery was successful this past week in, in New York City. Um, we are praying for travel mercies for Josh, who will be traveling um, to Cote d'Ivoire uh, to help lead his mother's funeral. 
We pray for Nikki, a guest of our table of abundance who is not feeling well. Um, for Ruth, who is now at strong in palliative care. And for Mark Soul, who is watching us this very minute from strong, <laughs> having suffered a stroke. We pray also for Cheryl Jones's friend, whose baby died this week, and for her brother-in-law and their family on the death of his wife. Let us be in a spirit of prayer as we bring our many names of people and our many names for God to the table of grace. great living God. As our many loved ones have been named, we turn to your many names, for you meet the needs of each one here in this sanctuary, and those who have died, and those watching online, and those wandering streets and unknown to us all. In this world of many faiths, we pause to pray to you, God of many names. Strong Mother God, we need the dependability and love of your mothering. For sometimes you feel like we feel like you're our only provider. We are grateful for all the graces we have received this week, and thank you especially for Alan's uh, healing journey. Warm Father God, we need your warm presence and your provision for healing and strength, for Mark and Nikki, for comfort in grief, for all who grieve, especially the parents who have lost a child, and also for those in palliative and hospice care. Old, aching God, we resonate with your ache for our distance and our problems. We ask you to wrap Josh and his family in your closeness as they travel long distances. Young, growing God, we join in your positive hope and commitment to the ongoing health of this world. In spite of the dis-ease of violence and warfare, we particularly pray for those college students who are facing very difficult circumstances on their campuses and for victims of violence everywhere. Grace and great living and peacemaking God, we trust in your presence, your power, and above all, your companionship, seen especially in the life of our example, Jesus, in whose name we turn to you in prayer, daring to call you our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
As we prepare for our time of giving to God, uh, we do so in a variety of ways. We've had many uh, gifts that have come in through the week uh, in time, talent, and treasure. So we appreciate that and want to um, bless those uh, gifts. Our announcements, uh, so the ushers will be taking the offering, but our announcements this morning, uh, we continue, this is our second week of a new series on Reading on the Rock about music. And Monday night at 7 o'clock, Greg Bogosian and Tim Foose will talk about their instruments. Um, and um, just it's just a great series. And if you missed Mondays, you might want to go back, and Kevin does a nice explanation of the piano. We have some church work days coming up because it is leaf season. Uh, so the Saturday mornings of November 11th and 18th from 9 to 12, we'll be out in the front yard, the side yard, the parsonage yard, uh, cleaning up as many leaves um, in time to, for the city to come by and pick all those up. There is a, a fundraiser in the house. Uh, Nico Troop is headed to a band um, challenge of the bands what did you battle of the bands in Philadelphia so if you haven't had enough Halloween candy they're selling a box uh, full of candy uh, for me we have lots of candy and I'm just gonna give her some cash <laughs> had enough candy but that is uh, to benefit Nico in order for him to be able to make this trip I did want to elaborate just a little bit on um, the announcement that um, prayer requests that Margaret were praying for Ruth in palliative care. That's Ruth Humphrey. And if you remember, we, we just um, sent her cards for her 100th birthday. And she fell a few days later and injured her head. And so um, she's in strong um, in that care unit. But continue to pray for Ruth Humphrey. There you go, buddy. I'll trade you. You're welcome. So in the midst of all of this, let us stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. and loving God in this season of remembrance and in the trust that your continual presence guides us and keeps us we offer to you these gifts for your blessing we pray this in Jesus name amen I invite you to be seated and we will center ourselves for communion with the Taze piece Kyrie
this place. The space is thin between heaven and earth. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth sing glory. Here in this place, the church above and below is one. Peter is here, and Paul, Martha, and all the Marys, the saints from far back and those who left us not long ago. And only sight prevents us from seeing them, one with us on the other side. Let heaven be glad, and let the whole earth sing glory. Here in this place, the God who made them is present. The Lamb, the glorious, sits glorious on the throne beside us. The Spirit of God, the Dove, makes a resting place among us. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth sing glory. Blessing, honor, and glory and power be to our God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and command rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples. And on the night in which he was betrayed, and as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of juice and said, This cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. Now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and juice, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labor, and in these Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Christ makes us whole. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills God's purpose, we fall silent and remember Jesus who came because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Christ alone can offer. Pour out now your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for the world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Invite the communion stewards to come forward. In our brokenness, Christ makes us whole. And through this gift of blessing, we are healed.
are offered the cup. Go ahead and drink. There are waste baskets on either side of the aisle. Come and feast.
always know when it's a good Sunday when we run out of juice, right? Let us pray. Christ's food in our souls, our food shared like his. Christ's life in our hands, our lives shaped by his. Christ's love in our hearts, our love warmed through his. Christ's peace on our path, our path following his. Amen. So in the spirit of thanks and uh, gratitude for all God's blessings, I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, Give Thanks. It's in the black hymnal number 2036. benediction is to pray that God grant us grace to follow our, the holy saints in virtuous and godly living, that we may all come to those unspeakable joys which have been prepared for those who sincerely love you. And together the people of God say, Amen. I invite you to be seated for the postlude. Let all things now living.